Welcome everybody and thank you for joining us for this online lunchtime lecture. My name is Mary Redfern, I'm the curator of the East Asian collections at the Chester Beatty and I was very happy uh, to be also the curator for our current exhibition Edo in Colour, Prints from Japan's Metropolis. And it is very hard for me to believe uh, the last six months have gone by very quickly indeed. And this exhibition will actually be closing this Sunday on the 5th of December. So if you haven't seen the second part of the exhibition, now is your last chance to do so on site. Um, so the exhibition will be open Friday, Saturday, Sunday with all the times on our website. It's completely free and you don't need to book, just follow the COVID protocols that we have um, as devised on the website. And we'd be delighted to see you. But if you can't make it see the exhibition in per person, the exhibition is also fully available on our website as is the first part of the exhibition that was shown from May to the end of August. As we approach the end of this exhibition, um, I wanted us to have a couple of talks that focused on some of the best known artists of Japan's Edo period. And so today I'm really delighted to welcome my friend and colleague, Dr. Ryoko Matsuba, to discuss um, one of Japan's finest artists, really, the celebrated Hokusai, and highlight one of his most famous works, The 36 Views of Mount Fuji, but from an angle that has been little explored before. So I think this will really give us a new insight into this very famous work. Dr. Matsuba is lecturer in Digital Japanese Arts and Humanities at the Sainsbury Institute for the Study of Japanese Arts and Cultures, which I can tell you from first-hand experience is a fantastic research space for all things Japanese, and as part of the University of East Anglia in Norwich is also a wonderful place to study. Dr. Matsuba is a specialist of Edo period print culture, and she received her PhD at Ritsumeikan University in 2008, and has since published extensively on diverse aspects of prints, printed books, and the vital world of Edo's print culture. Dr. Matsuba was part of the curatorial team for the wonderful 2017 exhibition, Hokusai, Beyond the Great Wave at the British Museum, and in 2019 again for the British Museum's very engaging and exciting city exhibition, Manga for which she was also co-author of the wonderful exhibition catalogue, which is a really beautiful publication highlighting the richness and energy of manga arts, but with an eye also to the histories behind them. And I will mention that that book is available in our museum gift shop. Uh, there'll be some time for questions at the end, so please put any questions that might occur to you in the Q&A box as the talk goes, and I will pick those up at the end. Otherwise, it just remains for me to welcome Ryoko, and we can all enjoy copying Edo landscapes, Osaka miniature versions of Hokusai's 36 views of Mount Fuji. Ryoko, thank you. Thank you so much, Mary. This is really a solid introduction. So I'm sharing my screens now. and. Okay, so I hope you see my uh, slide here, but thank you so much and um, I really th thank you, uh, Dr. Mary Ludfam, for inviting me to participate in this event. I'm currently, as Mary said, uh, working at the Sainsbury Institute for Study of Japanese Art and Cultures in Norwich, East England. I had hoped to visit the exhibition Edo in Color at the JCBD Library. But sadly, it is closing quite soon. Um, as Mary said, it's 5th of December. Um, and I will not be able to come to the Dublin before the closing date, especially under this circumstance. But I'm so glad I'm able to participate over the internet to explore a subject related to work in this exhibition. So I think the slide is changed, okay. I hope so. Um, so now we, I'm showing Shirigahama Beach, Sagami province. So for those of you not in Dublin, we can also visit the online version of the exhibition through the Testa PD Library website. There are three different book size works in this exhibition. One is Shirigahama Beach, Sagami province, a color woodblock print from the 36 views of Mount Fuji. And a book illustration from the 500 views of Mount Fuji and a Kirifuri waterfall near Mount Kurokami, Shimotsuke from the print trees tour of waterfalls in various provinces. These three works were produced in the early 1830s when Hokusai 
with his early 70s. In my talk today, I'd like to introduce historical background of one of his masterpieces, Six Views of Mount Fuji, and consider impact of that series within the commercial culture of Edo period Japan. In doing so, I'd like to consider how popular Ukiyo designs were reused and copied in the early modern and modern period in Japan. This forms part of an examination of the publication history of Hokusai's landscape series, such as six views of Mount Fuji. As I said earlier, this series was created by Hokusai was his 70s. The average life expectancy in Japan at the time was middle 40s. However, Hokusai died at age of 90. So he had impressively long life and remained vigorous and productive until the very end of his life. In some of you, if some of you do not know about Hokusai and his life, let me explain briefly about Hokusai's career before he produced the 36 views of Mount Fuji. He started his career as a woodrock cutter in his mid teens. This is a printed book entitled Rakujo Koshi, written by Unchusa Sancho, published in 1775, for which Hokusai actually cut the printing books when he was 16 years old. Then about 1778, when he was 18, he became a pupil of Katsukawa Shunsho, a leading ukiyo artist known particularly for his actor prints. His artist name at the time was Katsukawa Shunro. Under Shunsho, Hokusai produced actor prints in his master's Katsukawa style. However, this was hardly satisfied for him and he left the school. Hokusai was soon began studying other artistic tradition and styles, such as the Limpa style, which was established by the Kyoto-based artist Tawaraya Sotatsu and Ogata Korin. At this point, he stopped producing actor prints and his name was changed to Sori. However, that Kyoto style was not entirely suited his artistic vision, which was anchored in the life of Edo-based merchant and craft people. There was the environment in which he grew up and lived his whole life. In 1798, he declared his artistic independence and changed his name from Sori to Hokusai and became an independent artist, unafraid to any school. He produced this rimono, privately distributed his patrons, acquaintances, and publisher to inform his name change. Two of the terpenes strain their necks energetically, even ambitiously, upwards, which suggests Hokusai's strong will to be an independent artist. From around 800s, Hokusai devoted most of his efforts to the production of dynamic double-page illustrations for exciting novels issued serially in many volumes, known as Yomihon. Then, from 1814, he began, publish, he began publishing illustrated manuals entitled Hokusai Manga for Amateur Artists. Originally, Hokusai Manga was planned as one volume work, but because of its huge popularity, it was extended to 10 volumes, which were published between 1814 to 1819. 
Later, volumes 11 and 12 published in early 1830s. Volume 13 was prepared at the time, but it was not published until the year after Oxide's death in 1850. The series was rounded out with volume 14, which appeared in the later 1850s. And then volume 15, the final volume was published in 1878. That later was prestige, mostly based on the book Oxai had designed in 1818. This widely popular book spread Hokusai's fame across Japan and later the world. In the 1820s, however, his output were relatively quiet. In fact, Hokusai's second wife and oldest daughter passed away during the 1820s. Moreover, Izuma Kyoshin's biography of Hokusai published in 1893, Kyoshin suggests that Hokusai had a stroke in the late 1820s, but recovered by using his own medicine. From that point on, however, his lines never regained their former fluency. We are not 100% certain exactly what happened to him in the 1820s, but in view of the drop in his productivity in the late 1820s, he must have been going through a very difficult time. At the new year of 1830, he sent a letter to a publisher stating, this spring, no money, no clothes, barely enough to eat. If I can't come to an arrangement by the middle of the second month, then no spring for me. This short note reveals how he was suffering, it reveals his dear circumstances at the time. This is one year before he published the series of the 36 views of Mount Fuji. Oh, sorry. I... Okay, then. Okay, so it probably is too many pictures, so it's slightly slow to change, sorry. So in 1831, the Edo, I'm currently Tokyo, a published Nishimura Yohachi advertised a new set of prints, 36 views of Mount Fuji by Old Man Itsu, formerly Hokusai, printed in blue, one view on each sheet published progressively. Hokusai had worked mainly on book illustrations before the 36 views of Mount Fuji. The latter was Hokusai and publisher Nishimuraya's first and most ambitious large format color print project. The series was so popular, the publisher added 10 extra designs to the original 36 views of Mount Fuji series around 1834 to 35. Hokusai finally designed a total of 46 prints bearing the title 36 views of Mount Fuji between 1831 and 1835. The first five designs of this series were originally printed entirely in shade of blue. As you see here, Testability Library's impression is one of earlier blue impressions. Nishimuraya published the prints in instrument of five prints, almost as if he was not really confident that Hokusai's prints would become popular and did not want to take too big financial risk. In the case of color prints, outline blocks, key block, and color blocks were cut in the block cutter's workshop and then transferred to the printer. 
the more colors a design needed, the more cherry wood printing blocks were required, as well as more pigment. And also, the more times the printer had to print the print. The blue only prints in the 36 views series look a dramatic thanks to the used a novel new imported pigment, Prussian blue. But at the same time, they are cost effective to produce since they required fewer color blocks. In fact, Nishimuraya and Hokusai gradually added the color after the initial 510 prints in which blue dominated. When we compare the design and color scheme of earlier blueprints with later prints in the series, the latter are generally more colorful and have more details, especially in the gradual addition of more human figures. Normally, a publisher try not to take too many risks, especially with an artist such as Hokusai, who was known for who was not known for his landscape prints. The project of the 36 views of Man Fuji was a great challenge for both Hokusai and Nishimuraya. After the success of the first set of the series, Hokusai became more trusted and he now had the means to fully explore color and detailed depiction, which shows his true artistic vision. The 36 views of Mount Fuji was actually Hokusai's first popular series of large format landscape prints. Hokusai previously produced some landscape series before the 36 views. However, most of the case, cases, they are much smaller format and dominated by human figures. In fact, the 36 views represent a sensational innovation in the history of single sheet ukiyo woodblock prints. Until 1810s, the landscape were mainly called ukiye. Ukiye can be translated perspectivist and was introduced into Japanese print, popular print culture around 1740s from imported European manuals and prints. This is an example from Chester Beatty Library exhibition entitled Newly Published Perspective View and Joining Cool Evening at Edo's Ryogoku Bridge, depicted by Kitagara, Kitagawa Utamaro II. This case, the artist captured all details of the summer scene at the Ryogoku Bridge by using one point perspective method. This kind of perspective landscapes, landscapes, landscapes were mainly produced as a souvenirs and most of, most of examples depicted touristic side of the city are bustling with people such as shelters, Yoshiwara tea houses and festival scenes. However, Hokusai 36 views are totally different from these ukiyo examples. He depicted the dynamic force of nature. Since of daily life, people engaged in craft and also glimpses of Mount Fuji, Mount Fuji shame uh, from unusual angles. Depicting landscapes caused a sensation. It became very popular in Edo and other cities. In fact, precedent for this way of depicting landscape can be found in book illustration. illustrations. For example, multi volume mesh. Late 18th century. In those books, the artist depiction of landscapes different from the approach to landscapes in single sheet print format. 
Hokusai was very active in the book production before he produced 36 views and he introduced compositional elements from book illustration and his, his innovative way of depicting stories into his depiction of Mount Fuji in this color print series. That was quite new innovation at that time. Ukiyo single sheet prints were normally ephemeral publication. The wood blocks were not used to publish a print again and again. Obviously, this was the case with actor prints, which were usually linked to a current performance, but even landscape prints rarely had a long life. However, among Ukiyo prints, the 36 views of Mount Fuji is a rare example of a print series that remained in print for extended period as demonstrated by the weak late impressions of the series often encountered. Thus, we can study different impressions printed over many years, and we can also study the production from different peers. For example, in the variant printing of Southern Lane Beneath the Summit, Sanka Haku from the 36 views of Mount Fuji, the key block remains unchanged, but new blocks were used to print shredded pine trees and add a green band along the lower edge of the mountain. This version is definitely confirmed as later due to the clear bricks appearing in the key block lines. Publishers sometimes try to refresh print taken from the tired key block by adapting new color blocks to enliven the design for potential buyer in this way. This suggests that the series was in print during Hokusai's lifetime and remained so long after the artist had died. Shortly after the 36 views of Mount Fuji series was first published, the Osaka artist Hokumio produced a miniature version of the series. I think this is a, many of you know Osaka, we call it Osaka now as, as well, but it's a, like west side of the Japan and the second biggest of the city in the, in the country. In the original 36 views, the famous Red Fuji designs shows an obvious difference between earlier and later impressions. Ukiyo scholar Roger Keyes pointed out that the earliest version of Red Fuji did not use the vivid red color we almost always encounter in this design, but used a subtle pinkish color instead. As you see here, the Osaka version reproduced the light pink of artist impression of the design, but the size is one is the size of the original. As I said earlier, the publisher added 10 extra design to the original 36 views of Mount Fuji series around 1834-35. Interestingly, the Osaka version does not include these later designs. Therefore, we can establish that the publication date of the miniature or Osaka version was not far from the first set of the original 36 views. The Osaka version was published around 34 to 35. This was the earliest example of miniature landscape series by an Osaka artist that was based directly on designs by an Edo artist. Osaka version has a signature hokumyo. It seems likely that the artist tried to suggest that Hokusai was involved in the series. However, Hokumio is an Osaka artist. He actually produced some of actor prints in Osaka before he made Osaka miniature version of the 36 views. In fact, other Osaka actor print artists created miniature actor prints before Hokumio produced his miniature landscape series. This is miniature version of actor prints by two artists. Tanko 
and Chunpu. This design was copied from larger format actor prints designed by their master, Hokushu, in 1816. Hokushu's pupils, Tanko and Shunpu, reused their master's design to create smaller and cheaper format miniature prints. Hokumil, in fact, was also Hokushu's pupil, but copying Edo landscapes by using Edo artist Hokusai's 36 views represented an um, innovation. It was Hokumil's new take of creating miniature series. Ukio Diras and Scala Peter Berak and John Ferrio created a very useful diagram to compare different sizes of Osaka standard single sheet prints in their article 2017. As you see here, Oban size is the size of original, um, original Hawk size 36 views and miniature version in this article. Berak and Ferrio called them Mameban. Mame means beans in Japanese to indicate small size. The down average one is the size of an oba, about 13 by 9.5 centimeters. The miniature format was used mainly cheaper on children's toy prints. After Hokumyo's 36 views of Mount Fuji, Hokumyo also copied Hokusai's other landscape series such as the series 12 waterfalls in various provinces and remarkable views of the bridges in all provinces. In this bridge series, Hokumio Ad, his own design, depicted Tenjin Bridge in Osaka. However, Hokumio's Osaka Bridge design is not as exciting as other his copy of Hokumio's Hokusai's original series. So in terms of artistic skills, Hokumi was not skilled artist than Hokusai, but he was good at copying Edo landscape as a miniature. After Hokumi's 36 views of Mount Fuji, Hokumi himself and other Osaka artists produced the further miniature versions of other Edo landscape series, such as Hiroshige 53 station, of the Tokaido series, etc., which remained in print into 1850s. We are not sure the Edo publisher gave permission to the Osaka publishers to produce these series, but when we see the Osaka publisher issuing several such versions, we can say that Osaka artists and publishers created a new genre of miniature Edo prints, and neither the artist whose designs were copied, nor the Edo publishers who commissioned and produced a full-size print series accused them of plagiarism. There does not seem to have been artist copyright in the Edo period. The publisher commissioned the design from the artist and the publisher on the printing blocks. He had cut to reproduce those designs, or in the blocks gave the publisher something like copyright. Hokumio's miniature version of the 36 views of Mount Fuji was the first example. And furthermore, very interestingly, it exists in different editions. As you see here, these two designs are both miniature version of Hokusai's landscape. One has Hokumio's signature, and the other does not. By comparing current of these versions, Hokumio's dead version was a bluish color and the other was used more pinkish and greenish color. I think the latter, that, that that one does not have Hokumio's signature was a later edition. However, the unnamed artist did not copy the design from Hokumio's version, but copied Hokusai's original. The first impression of this Hokusai design was colored entirely blue, and the publisher gradually added some more colors to the design in later printings 
by having more color blocks cut. The example of the light here, version of hook size original. As you see here, um, this design is quite similar of the later edition of miniature version. So far, I have find, found at um, nine miniature design among 36, 36 design that was that were represented in two different editions. One is Hokumu's signature and the other result. In most of these cases, the latter version or copy the later paintings, editions of Hokusai designs. Whereas as I explained earlier, Hokumu's miniature version was published just after the original Sati Shakespeare's appeared. And of course, their color scheme was as close to that of the earliest impressions of Hokusai's designs. Hokumu was a pioneer who, um, who created the genre of copying Edo landscapes. It, it was then taken up by many other publishers into the 1850s. Over those years, the genre grew in popularity. The first examples, Hokumu's original miniatures, would not have survived in large numbers into the 1840s or 50s. As these kind of prints are tended to be cheap publications, there are still demand for them. So other artists began producing their own miniature statistic piece series. When they did this, they used hawk size originals albeit in later printings rather than copying from Hokumu's miniatures. I'd like to show another example of later miniature version. These two design, again, miniature version, but they are, have got Hokusai signature here, not Hokumyo. However, so slightly difficult to see, I think, but um, these two character in the cartouche lead Kawaji, which is actually the name of the publisher who issued Hokumyo's original series. These two prints are facsimile reproduction of Hokumyo's miniature, but presented as though they were by Hokusai by using his signature on them. We cannot identify when these two copies are published, but we can say for sure this was not done by Hokusai or by Hokumyo. Some unidentified artist took up Hokumyo's idea but used Hokusai's signature. In fact, the design itself was copied from Hokumyo's miniature version. So, so this is very complicated, but it shows very interesting aspect of copying designs. Here's something making a someone making the facsimile reproduction of an Osaka copy as an Edo original. It is possible that the fake Hokusai signature miniature print were produced in the late 19th century. The posthumous popularity of Hokusai is apparent from the growing international market for his works in the 1880s and 1890s. Most immediately appearing to foreign audience were the single sheet large format print series. In the early 1880s, according to the record of the Association of Print Publishers in Tokyo, publishers started to sell woodblock prints and other artworks to foreign customers in 1880s. It was reported that as a result, the demand for hook size works rose and dealers needed to harvest material from those domestic collectors who still possessed many of Hokusai's works for sale to their new, interna new international customers. We also need to think that while Japanese tradition, traditional artifacts flowed abroad throughout the 1880s, 
Domestically, commercial publishing using Woodrow printing was no longer viable technology for meeting the demand of mass audience. To create a fake Hokusai miniatures might be low cost and an easy solution to producing Hokusai prints to meet the demand. Publishers and artists used Hokumeo's idea, but used the name of Hokusai on their miniature version on, of his designs. We found another example of miniature shoes based on the 53 pairing for the Tokaido Road. A collaboration between the Edo artist, Utagawa Toyokuni III, Kuniyoshi, and Hiroshige that was published in 1845-46. On the left-hand side is the Osaka miniature version of that series that was published in 1846, just after the original is published, was published, depicted by Osaka artist, Kaishunte Sadayoshi and Goryute Sadahiro. Matsudaira Ukiyoshi Kara Matsudaira Susumu wrote about an advertisement for the Osaka series. He said, the publisher emphasized that this miniature series completely copies the design of the Edo Masters, but reduce the size of the originals. The image in Osaka version were copied by popular Ukiyo masters in city, Kaishunte Sadayoshi and Goryute Sadahiro. However, the publisher expressed modesty regarding them, although our copy of the designs are not as good as Edo originals, the brokers and printers have carefully worked on this series. There's no trick here. The importance of the Osaka miniature series is that it demonstrates the high caliber copying technique of these Osaka artists. This advertisement cited about emphasized the quality of the block cutting and printing, which were the key element of print production. In the Edo publishing world, the finished prints were seen as a product of the work of artists. Woodrock cutters and printers carried out under the supervision of the publisher. Osaka publisher, of course, knows that all designs were derived from, derived from Edo originals, but to create a miniature version was not simply imitating the original. To work these prints required skilled artisans capable of reducing the design successfully so that they would still work in miniature. There is undeniably a close relationship between the production of facsimile reproduction and fake print. Just, I just wondering, do everybody think, does everybody think Hokumeo's miniatures are fakes? I don't have any answer at the moment, but to conclude, there are two things we can consider. First of all, first, about the popularity of the 36 views of Mount Fuji before this series, neither Hokusai himself nor any other artist, any other Edo artist, had never achieved such a great success with the landscape series. Hokusai drew upon his experience creating book illustration using the same dynamic compositional techniques to create a vivid image of places. His landscape series created the sensation in Edo and another Edo artist, Utagawa Hiroshige, inspired by Hokusai, produced his equally successful landscape series, 50, 53 Steps Tokaido, two or three years after the publication of Hokusai's 36 views. From then on, Edo landscape series became a major print genre and other artists also tried their hand at it. And the second point to consider is that Osaka artists created a miniature version of those popular eight of shades. After the Hokumyo 36 views of Mount Fuji, they reproduced most of the other famous eight landscape series as miniatures. Osaka artists cannot compare, compete 
by producing landscape print series on their own, but they demonstrated their skill in reducing the Edo designs and having them well printed. These two different production processes were coexist in Edo and Osaka, and it gives us a better understanding how Hokusai's such six views of Man Fuji was so innovative and further enhanced Hokusai's legacy. That is the um, end of my talk, and I'm handing over to Mary. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much, Ryoko. That was a fabulous talk and very fascinating. I actually heard Ryoko present some of this research at a recent conference, so it was off the back of that I invited her to speak to us today, and I'm really delighted that she was able to, so thank you very much for your presentation. Um, and we have some questions coming in, so please do add any questions you have either to the Q&A box or the chat box, and I will find those. But first, I have a question um, relating sort of to your wider role in digital humanities. So obviously these miniature prints, you know, they're not necessarily as prestigious as the original Hokusai prints in terms of collections that have them. Would you say that it's this digitization process, something which Ritsu Meikan is incredibly famous for and has done so much for us here at the Chester Beatty as well? Is digitization something that is really supporting research into these kinds of um, variant or sort of reiterations of more famous and popular designs and yeah. I wonder if you could speak about that. Mm, it's a very good point actually because uh, previously uh, before we had got like database or online collection database um, normally we introduce the works from the book and some there's limitation to all images and all curators need to select their best collection from their co best piece from the their collection, but that kind of miniature sheet is some sort of like copy of the original, and so there's, no, there's no space to introduce that kind of things in their book series, series of the book. But for digitization, we took everything, in, and then we can introduce them in the like right, right, like wider um, database and um, collection database from the museums. So. That kind of things is gives us some opportunity to find something new example to consider, especially like the Fakshimi reproduction or copy of the original. It has some sort of um, significant rule to consider the publication history, especially after it appeared and something happened in the 1880s. But um, it's not very, we haven't been very focusing on that kind of like aspect. So I think definitely there's the the digital archive uh, project is very encouraged us to find some sort of new examples. Yeah, no, it's wonderful that digitization is, is so much more than just putting things online. It's actually allowing new research and supporting and, and seeing these objects also asks new questions in mm -hmm. and of itself. So it's totally. Very important thing for all of us museums to be doing. So I will go through some of the questions. So I've got a couple of questions here that are sort of focused on the process. So um, someone has asked, how was Hokusai paid? Was he paid as a sort of one-off payment? Did he get some kind of royalties? Or if they made a change, would he have received more money as things were being produced? Mm, that is a really interesting question. And we had some like he Hokusai's letter. And it's actually um, some publisher paid um, for, paid some money for his drawings, which is preparatory drawings before the drawings was cut to create the woodblocks. But we cannot say for sure how much money he can earn after the publication. So he definitely gets get paid for his drawings, mm -hmm. but um, publisher definitely or like book and get some money after the publication in the process of produced, like in the process of selling the prints. Mm -hmm. We cannot say for sure how much money hooks I get, hooks I get paid after the publication. Always a big challenge. Yeah. <laughs> I think with Japanese prints, it's it's kind of surprising how how hard it is to find the concrete information on mm. on payments and prices and yeah, but as actually, as some, especially the six views of Mount Fuji series was sold after the Hokusai death, 
-hmm. And uh, the publisher got man money using the Hokusai design, but Hokusai no longer <laughs> be there. So he cannot get paid in that process. Of course. And also sort of in terms of the process, so obviously, as you said, Hokusai started his career as um, doing block cutting. And is that something that continued to be part of his practice? Or how was the sort of the printmaking process sort of set in Edo? Um, I, I have never seen that he cut his own blocks. <laughs> but um, I can see he particularly um, kind of like focusing on the quality of block cutting. Mm -hmm. So sometimes in 1830s, in his letter, he complained about the result of book, uh, block cutting. Mm -hmm. He saw the final result, but he saw this, the line is not very expected, not original his line, not faithfully copied his line. Mm -hmm. So he complained um, the publisher to recut the block. So this is an article from the Elisti News in print quarterly. So he's actually changed, the publisher is actually changed the um, like wood block, recut the wood block, part of the wood block. Mm -hmm. So in that case, he's really keen on having um, high quality block cutter, mm -hmm. but himself was trained um, block cutter, but not as good as a professional block, block mm -hmm. cutter, I think. And I think he might not be able to use his own technique <laughs> to reproduce his line, I think. It's very important to know there's so many different skills <clears throat> involved. Um, and and let me see. Oh, gosh, there's so many questions. Right. Let me get through some of these. Um, so another question, um, the recent British Museum exhibition. So this is a uh, Hoxai's great picture book of everything drawings. So uh, the question asks, these were described as postcard size, the, the drawings smaller than than sort of the Oban prints. So is this a case where Hoxai is actually making drawings for a, a smaller sized print? Oh, <laughs> I think it, it's very like I saw if if so it's very interesting. <laughs> but I think this postcard size or uh, like, um the drawings is also meant to be book illustrated book. But on the later probably the owner previous owner is cut off and making the like single sheet drawing. But it's actually. The uh, Yokohon we called um, the vertical size, um, smaller illustrated books. Mm -hmm. And 1823, he actually produced, um, we called the Sekin Hinagata, the design book for tobacco pipe and combs. Mm -hmm. And he used the same format as uh, um, the drawings and at the British Museum. Um, and uh, this is very small, small size. So it's, he actually produced 1823 of this size. So it means probably he, he didn't copy it from the Osaka artist, mm -hmm. but some sort of um, making such a small, like I'm talking about um, British Museum drawings, but mm -hmm. this is very, very fine and very detailed depiction. And it's very difficult to cut for the block cutters, I think. But sort of like a smaller format is really challenging for block cutters. And the Hoxha is already uh, done some sort of similar things in already 1820s. And he might continue afterward to produce that kind of illustrations. Mm. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, another question. So in terms of, um, you mentioned that Hoxha had a stroke um, before the landscape views. And you, I think you touched on this a little bit, but what would you say in terms of the quality of his work before or after this moment? Is is there much more known than, than what you've already said? Mm. So when we see the, his paintings, he see, he actually rarely produced his like paintings before 1820s, but we have some few examples. And if you see the lines on his paintings, it's actually a bit more smooth. But if you see some sort of like the drawings after 1820s, a few survived um, in, and so we can see, the, especially if you see the um, 
like British Museum drawings at the exhibition, the line is sometimes slightly broken down. Mm -hmm. It's not this, if it's cut, carvers can cut very smoothly. There's that one stroke. But um, if you see the drawings, you can see actually break down the line when you draw some sort of like straight line or wave line. So we can speculate he had some, some problem. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, so we can't, it, there's no clear evidence about his disease, mm -hmm. but we can see some difference from before 1820s and after the 1820s. Okay. And then something sort of more on the relationship between Osaka and Edo. So do we know where the Osaka prints were sold? Were they sold in Osaka? Do we know if they made their way back to Edo? And also just, I think it's, it's interesting that the, how prints are so tied to Edo that they always talk about these landscapes from Edo when the Osaka artists are discussing them. Um, but just sort of the relationship between Edo and Osaka and the, the circulation of prints mm. more broadly. Mm. Mm. Interesting. And so I think the landscape prints is normally the publisher wants to sell as a souvenirs and they sell at the site. So people need to come there and buy something and bring to their own country. So that is kind of like purpose of to produce the landscapes. So the landscape series, I think, is mainly sold the places mm -hmm. were depicted. So, um, but um, in terms of uh, circulation, sometimes uh, Osaka publisher has a branch in Edo or Edo publisher has a branch in Osaka. And if some sort of like very popular series, for example, Six Views of Mount Fuji, can sell in Osaka as well. Mm -hmm. And Osaka audience can buy some sort of things, but it has to be very, very popular, be sold in the different area. And then another sort of question tying into that sort of wider publishing industry is, were the Osaka prints subject to censorship? I was trying to look and see if I could see any censor marks on the tiny miniature prints, but I don't know if, if you could talk about that. Yeah, so I think I had some sort of discussion already before, but there's not clear answer, I'm afraid, but it's not, it hasn't um, kind of like, um, this miniature version is probably very cheap and so some sort of lower quality publication is mainly uh, created for children. Mm -hmm. And the publisher is sold, sold, sell that kind of publication is also not prestige publishers. Mm -hmm. So, and so normally, um, the some prestige publication, for example, like very um, like academic book. Mm -hmm. So publisher of, often um, spotted it's is plagiarism or not. So there's some like pub, book public a pub, book publisher guild is not really happy to have the copy of the contents all the time. So in it was there's some like um, censorship around but that kind of cheaper publication is probably it's not really affected their like Hokusai's main publication and um, in other words probably it's good to have some another adaptation <laughs> in the way in the different city so I think because after the Hokumyo so many example we have as a miniature Edo landscape copy so then this publisher and didn't have any problem to produce that kind of series. So I'm, I'm not quite sure what is that because of the uh, different prices, Edo and Osaka, or probably the difference of the quality or the like um, stage of the print is probably um, related why they don't um, have a problem to produce that kind of copy. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I think you mentioned that, that we don't really have any sense of, of whether this created tension between the publishers, but this is sort of the big question moving forward. Do you think we might find evidence that shows that this was a happy coexistence or that things weren't so happy? Mm. Yeah, so I think um, later, like, um, I just introduced uh, Matsudaira Susumu's um, advertisement, but publisher 
clearly mentioned, this is a copy of a dog landscape. But we would like to emphasize, they, they emphasize um, of the quality of printing yeah. and printing, uh, woodcutting and printing technique to create a uh, miniature version. So this is more like the, um, the different rule to um, <laughs> to reproduce some sort of, um, I think it can be happy coexisted. Mm -hmm. But um, after 1850s, is this kind of publication is suddenly disappeared. Mm -hmm. So I'm probably, I have to look, look at that some sort of publish, publisher censorship around that time. But in, especially after 1832 until 1850s, I think this probably there's have some happy relationship between them. <laughs> That's good. Mm. Uh, so I think I've got probably time for a couple more questions. So I will go for the big hitters now. Okay. Hokusai had this incredibly long life, which was amazing for his times, but also this incredible career. So the question is, like, what do you think made Hokusai so successful? <laughs> um, um, it's quite a big question, <laughs> but one thing is he, he, he had a very long life. If he died at the age of 60, before he produced 36 pieces of Mount Fuji, his legacy or his reputation is not the same as we have now. I can definitely say that. And, um, but he produced his masterpieces is actually when he was 70s. Um, 36 views of Mount Fuji produced at when he was 70s. Also, one of his masterpiece of book illustration is also when he was 70s. So this masterpiece is printed, well, printed materials is supported by high caliber block cutters. Mm -hmm. He particularly wants to use uh, Egawa Tomekichi and his studio people. So fortunately, he can use very um, skillful woodcutter and maybe printer at that time. So Hokusai himself definitely has a very innovative and he has a very good imagination. And he's, of course, he's a good artist, but also he, he, he was supported by the printing technology at that time. I think this is something the big uh, reason why Hokusai is so successful at that time. Thank you. And it's a hard question. <laughs> very <laughs> cruel to ask. So next question, not so difficult, but still very important. What books would you recommend for people who want to find out more about Hokusai and his works? Is there a particular catalogue or book that you think could be a good place for people to start reading? Mm, um... <laughs> okay, there's so Perhaps many books. Like you've worked on. But, um, That's fine. <laughs> I, I, think, I think Hokusai, the exhibition catalog, Hokusai Beyond the Grave, we try to cover the, some sort of later uh, his life, mainly. And that was probably a good start um, point to understand um, Hokusai's um, works, mm -hmm. especially later period. But um, Yes, and then we have a bibliography in the, in the catalog as well. <laughs> but um, there's, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of um, different. Um, but if you want to see some uh, his earlier works, um, the John Campbell's Hooks and His Age is slightly like, a bit more like, focusing on earlier his work. It's good. I think it's good um, introduction as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Uh, two very good recommendations, which I would definitely echo. If you hadn't mentioned the British Museum publication, I would have done for you, because it's it's a really nice for also introducing um, aspects of his life and his thought as well, which is really important to seeing those later works in context. All I can say is a huge thanks to Ryoko, Dr. Matsuba. Um, thank you so much for joining us and for bringing us this insight into 
this really exciting world. And I think that's the thing I love so much with Japanese prints. You know, I have acres of books behind me on Japanese prints, but there is still so much we can find out by looking at, at these new areas. So thank you, Dr. Matsuba, for introducing us to the wonderful miniature prints of Osaka. And um, I hope to see you soon, very soon. Thank you. Thank so you. Much. Thank you. See you soon.